Today, we're super excited to announce the Amplify Generation 2 developer experience, which is a code-first developer experience for creating full-stack applications. And for our demo today, we're going to look at a Hacker News clone where you can see the different sites, the comments available on them. You can add comments, create new posts, and also log in and out as well. This application right now is the Next.js app router application, which has no cloud logic at all at this current point in time. So if you go in here, you can see it's just a bunch of hard-coded data that we display. So let's see how we can use the Amplify Generation 2 developer experience to layer in all these cloud functionalities like data and authentication to your application. So to get started, we can use the npm create amplify command. This will scaffold out a default set of files that will allow you to create your application backend, including a sample file for your application data and authentication settings. I'm going to create them in the current working directory where my application is up and running. Let's get started by running this mpx amplify sandbox command. mpx amplify sandbox starts a per developer cloud sandbox that you can use to easily iterate on your application. And you just have to start it once and never really worry about it again. So let's take a look at what there are the default files that Amplify creates in Amplify Gen 2. We first have a backend.ts file that imports our auth and data resources. In data, we have a fully typed way to describe our application data requirements that scaffold out into database tables. It also allows me to use it later on for cruddle operations to create, read, update, and delete items against them, as well as real-time subscriptions. Then we've got our off resource file, which includes the different mechanisms that my end users can log into my application. Right now, I'm just using email login. I can enable external providers like Google Sign-in or login with Amazon if you choose so as well. I'm actually kind of happy with the authentication that's set up that's already provided. I really just need my customers to use email, so this is good enough. Let's instead take a look at our data resource. See right now, the data resource scaffolds out a to-do data model, but we're not building a to-do application. We're building a Hacker News clone. So let's take a look at what our pages look like and what kind of data they need and work backwards from there to determine our data model. So now you can see I've got a post that has an ID, title, and some link information. And then it's also related to some comments. So let's start modeling that. I'm going to remove the to-do model and start saying that, hey, we need a post that is a model. Has an, uh, it has a title, which is a string, a link, which is a URL. And then it also needs some comments. So it has many comment. And then at the same time, I should also start scaffolding out the comment model. So every comment, let's see what they have. I think I have a page here that displays the comments. You can see a comment has the content and the time it was created at. So. You can see I have actually omitted the ID field and the created ad field because Amplify automatically creates these on behalf of you. So you don't have to manage these fields yourself. So this is actually my data model. And right now I have not attached any authorization rules to it. That means actually that nobody can access any data behind it. So let's change that. So first we want to specify that uh, for the post that we allow any public user to read the data. We also want to enhance this with additional rule where if I'm the owner of a post, I get to create, update, and delete them all at once. And this is the same authorization rule I'm also going to apply to my comment model because the behavior is effectively the same. I want everybody to be able to read my comment, but only the creator of the comment gets to edit them and delete them after the fact. Let's start looking at how do we actually um, talk to our application backend and start rendering out information from there. So first, what we need to do is make sure that our workflow facilitates a sign-in and sign-out experience like, like such. Now, this is a pretty rudimentary form of a sign-in and sign-out form. I'm going to add a few CSS styles just so it looks a little bit nicer. And I'm also going to show you how I've built this authenticator component. 
I'm going to navigate to my login page and just open that up. You can see Amplify actually has a authenticator component that we provide out of the box. And it allows you to have this entire login experience out of the gate. It comes unstyled, but for this purposes, I'm actually going to just go and scaffold out the default styling. So it's a little bit more pleasant to the eye. So you can see, here you go. And because I've been building my Cloud Sandbox in the background, the backend systems for uh, signing up users, login users is already available. So I can actually go and create my first user here. And, and once I've created a user, I can log in. You can see I'm already logged in. So you can see some parts of our application actually references the signed in user information. My current logged in user wasn't Renee, it was renbrand at amazon.com. So I need to actually go and update this as well. So let me first do that. Let me find the application layout. And this is where my, this is where I've currently hard coded the user information of Renee. And I've also always assumed that the user is logged in. Let's update this by fetching the actual signed in user and displaying their user information. Because all of this runs on the server side, we need to actually set up the Amplify server side utilities so that you can run a lot of the Amplify capabilities server side. So I'm going to create a new folder called utils, create a new file called Amplify server utils. And in here, I'm going to import the create server runner function from Amplify's Next.js adapter. This adapter comes installed when you use the Next.js template. And from here, I'm going to export a new runtime that allows you to run the Amplify library server side in complete isolation from each other. So there's no token cross-contamination across different requests. It's a security feature that we worked really hard on so that it'll be easier and more secure for you to build your application with a server, React server components. So in here, I need to import the Amplify configuration, which is available on my application's root directory. The application, the Amplify configuration file is effectively a configuration file that includes all of the backend connection details that I can then use within my application to make the Amplify library aware of where my backend is. So now that I've set up the server runner, I can actually run different Amplify library uh, capabilities on the server side in Next.js. So let's refactor this code to actually show the signed in user. Just say that I'm going to first define the user as null for a second so that we can leave it as null if the user is unauthenticated. Let me go in here and try to run with Amplify server context. So I'm going to import the cookies. Cookies is a function that is exported from the next headers library. It basically allows us to dynamically fetch what the current user cookies are and make sure that we always have the most up-to-date cookies on a per request basis. Now I've got the cookies. Let me pass this into a specific operation now. Uh, and you can see I've already imported the get current user functionality. And I'm saying that, hey, take these cookies and use those to try to get the current user information. And if there's any sort of issue, I'm just going to catch the error. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to do anything with it just yet. I'm just going to log it for now and leave the user blank. So now let me just set the user to the returned user here. And I think we're good to go. So let's come back to our application. You can see now the signed in user information is automatically updated. Now let's take a look at our data capabilities. I've created the data model in the background. And how do I create a new post now? I'm going to a new post page. You can see there's a title, URL, and submit button. The way that this works is it's a React server component with a server action. If I go to my new post page, you can see there's a form that has a action called create post and comment with a different set of information in here to place the title and the URL. To enable our data capabilities, we recommend you to create a separate file that's called the data server utility file. This data server utilities file will be will, will house our data clients that we'll be able to use to make API requests from a React server component or a server action. So first, let's import the functionality to generate a server client using cookies. 
and we're going to import that from the Next.js adapter. Next, we're going to actually import the type of our schema from our backend. That allows us to give get end-to-end -end type safety later on. I'm also going to need the config from my Amplify configuration. So that just allows me to know where my database endpoints are. And then last but not least, we need the cookies function from next headers to fetch the latest headers on a per request basis. So now we're going to be making the authenticated client. And the authenticated client allows me to make all these CRUDL requests as I defined in my authorization rules. Whereas the read only client that we'll be creating in a second is basically intended for public consumption only. So I'm going to generate the client. I'm going to pass in the schema as a type. Then I'm going to pass in the remaining settings like the config, the cookies, and ultimately the off mode should be a user pool. For a future use case, I'm already going to go create the public client. That's basically going to function exactly the same with the difference that it's authenticated with an API key, which only has read only access to the backend data. So let's come back to our form and use this client. I've got a form with a server action. The fields already match my data model. So really what I need to do is create an authenticated client, use the type completion to do the work for me. I'm going to use the thing client.models.create and then pass in the relevant information as needed. So in this case, we'll need a link and the title. So I'm going to use the form data. Get, I guess I called it URL in the form itself. And I'm going to also create the title, which I did call title in the form. So now let's come back and log that and see if we actually created the data correctly. Let's come back to our application and test this. Okay, I'm going to click Submit. Looks like it did submit it. And if I look at my logs, my Next.js application, you can see a new item was created. So that's great. Now let's try to list all these items in our application. And we can go to our root, root page here see where we have our currently hard-coded data and replace that with a dynamic data. So let me remove all this code. I'm gonna say posts and errors. And here I wanna use the public client that we created for read-only access. And again, I'm gonna let the code completion do the work for me. The other thing I realized is my application isn't quite aligned towards the expectation here. See, for example, link is not supposed to be nullable. That's not good. And also the other factor is that the title, same way. It's kind of like it could be undefined. That is not good. So let's make sure we actually change that on a data model side of things. Let's go back to our data resource, find the title, set it as required. And same as with the URL. Now I've changed that and my application client code is automatically fixed up so I don't have to worry about that any for, anymore. See, there's some other errors of highlights where I say uh, that they should always be strings. So I need to make sure that in any case, I'm submitting some information, even if they're empty strings. If I come back to my application root again, all the errors are gone. This in already includes the link that we created just now a second ago. Let's go to the comments page now and kind of address all the use cases here. If we go to our comments page, you can see that there's currently as well the hard-coded value of the post itself, even though I already route to a particular post ID. I also dynamically check if the user authenticated or not. If they are authenticated, I should also make sure that the add comment field is there. Otherwise, I should route them to the login experience. Let's first replace the data with what we need can see our data requirements are slightly different in this case. We are not only getting the ID, title, and link, but also we need, e we need to eagerly fetch the comments as well in one request. That just makes it a smooth way to make that request instead of having a waterfall set up where you first get the post and then get the comments 
each each and every one individually. Now, luckily, fetching things in an eager and lazy way is natively built into Amplify data. So let me create a new const here. And I'm going to use this public client to fetch the relevant post and all of its relevant comments. So I'm going to use get here, I'm going to find the identifier and pass that in that it was already in my route. I'm also going to set another setting as a second parameter called a selection set. A selection set allows me to choose what information to fetch in addition to the first level of depth in, in the model. So I can actually drill down into the relationship and get more information that I need it. So I do need the link, the ID, the title, um, but I also need the comments. And I can use the star operator to say that I want everything in within a comment as well. So now that if I hit uh, save, you can see the data that comes back comes in a really nicely, eagerly loaded structured format. And I can actually just replace this post now with my returned data. And now my application code should fix itself. There you go. Next, what we want to do is add the comments for this particular post. So let's go into our add com comment thing. And this should feel super familiar to you already. This is basically the same experience as before. Well, just use the authenticated client to make a uh, request to create a new post. Uh, to, well, we'll use the authenticated client to make a request to create a new comment for a given post. So I can just, again, let autocompletion do the work for me so I don't have to worry about anything. So to string. And I also want to make sure I pass in the proper post ID. And the moment I create a new item, I should revalidate the path and that will update the UI with the latest comment. So for example, I love a code first DX as a comment here. The moment I click add comment, you can see it's passed through and available on the client side. And this is completely using server actions. So there is no client side JavaScript that necessarily facilitated this network request from the client. So now I've basically transformed my application that was just a bunch of stale UI initially with dynamic cloud data. There's still a few things to clean up here and there. For example, using the middleware to route customers to a particular page when they're not logged in. That is obviously also supported with Amplify and also just a few touch-ups here and there around the data revalidation. I really hope this demo gets to show you how you can use Amplify to add AWS cloud capabilities to any modern web app that's built using TypeScript and is also server-side rendered. The demo I showed you today is a Next.js app router application, but we also support the Next.js pages router, React using Vite, um, Angular, Vue, and most recently Nuxt as well. And so there's a lot more to explore here that is uh, beyond just React server components and server actions, but also how you can use it completely on the client side as well. I hope this gave you a little glimpse of where Amplify is headed and how we're also changing from the current experience if you've used it before. We're really leaning into a fully end-to-end -end typed experience and a code-first experience that just gives you that fast iteration workflow without really having to think about the underlying infrastructure. You just think about the use cases.